Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host between Taramina's and Orion David I'd like to welcome those watching on Local Voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. I talk about here this week here on the podcast, we're going to recap the um, regionals for track and field. Um, obviously, um, a lot of storylines have come down. Um, we're going to talk soccer districts starting up this week, and then also we're going to preview the baseball and softball districts. So let's, without further ado, let's go to our main story here. Obviously, um, we're in the, we're getting close to the end of the um, high school season here. We're in the um, heart of spring. Um, we're in spring sports, obviously. Um, we're gonna go from um, we're gonna start. We're gonna recap each region where um, it was just around the OA. It was absolutely crazy to see how things went um, this past weekend over at um several places. So we're gonna recap the um results of the regions um around the OAA, and also we're gonna look at of course um. We're going to preview also the Oakland County meet coming up this weekend um, for the um, teams around the OAA. So, obviously, without further ado here, let's look at our first regional. Um, this was over Region 19. This was over at North Branch. Um, not going to go much into it, um, you know, considering how the OAA went. Um, so, here is the, um, so here's Region 19. Of course, this was over at... Um, North Branch, um, and the, um, the results here, of course, the, um, the results, um, of course, in the, on the girls' side of things, Goodrich won that one, um, with 117, North Branch was second with 79, Yale was, um, third with 72 points, um, Croswell Lexington was fourth place with 57 points, and fourth and fifth place, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, with 50 points, Pontiac, um, Took 16th, um, only scoring seven points um, in this one. So it kind of, I kind of expected that that would be the case over there with um, Goodrich winning it. Um, you know, I was surprised how impressive they were, considering that you know coming into the meet, I, I kind of thought you know Armada or Marysville or North Branch. You know, I mean North Branch, I know had a chance. Yale had a decent outing, um, 72 points, um, but. Goodrich really showed why they were they're one of the top teams in the um, region over there. So give credit where credit's due um, to um, the Martians. I mean the Martians, you know, going to the um, winning that one, scoring 117.7 points. So really impressive performance there for the Martians. Um, on the boys' side, um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's um, won it with 106 points. A really tight meet with Macomb Luther and North. Um, they were second with 95, oh, 99 points. Pontiac Northern Prep was a distant third with 65. North Branch was fourth with 64. And Yale running out the top five with, um, 57 points. Pontiac ended up getting one point out of that. Um, I think it's a difference playing in the Catholic League. Um, uh, ended up being a difference there. Um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, one of those top teams in the, um, Catholic League for a reason. Sprint was a dominant factor, ended up being the difference there, overcoming a very good McComb Luthor North team, who is very strong in the distance. Um, and it was, a, it was an interesting, interesting regional. I mean, give credit where credit's due. Um, it ended up showing. Um, give credit where credit's due, um, especially with, um, especially with um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, their boys, I mean, like showing a really good performance for them um you know really strong performance for them so just um you know overall dominant performance and Pontiac ended up taking 16th score one point um so you know so congratulations to Orchard Lake St. Mary's um you know obviously overcoming a very good Macomb Luther North team um so we'll see how that one goes there um let's go now to region number um 18 this was over at um, Ferndale, um, on the boys' side of things, Detroit Country Day, um, knocked off Ferndale. This, I mean, Detroit Country Day scored, um, 112 points. Ferndale was second with 83. Massonite's Lampier was third with 72 points. Um, St. Clair Shore Salt Lake was fourth with 54 points. Centerline was fifth with, um, 
holding off Hazel Park and Detroit Denby Tech um, by a combined two points. Um, Centerline was at 47 points. Hazel Park with 46, and Detroit Denby Tech had um, 45. And Harper Woods and Ferndale University were both also in this um, regional. Ferndale University took 11th place with 20 points, and Harper Woods was 12th with 19 points. So kind of in the boys, I kind of, it kind of everything I thought would expect would happen. Um, you know, kind of, you know, the, the, um, balance of Detroit Country Day really showed its, showed itself here. Ferndale, of course, very good in the sprints. Um, Ferndale needed some distance in this one, and I think, obviously, it didn't work out pretty well for, um, Coach Juan Rickman. Um, 83 points, you know, really showed, um, just really showed, like, um, how dominant, um, Detroit Country Day's balance was, and, it did show. I mean, credit to the um, credit where credit's due with the Yellow Jackets. I mean, they were dominant. Um, they were dominant, and it showed. Um, you know, give credit where credit's due to the um, Yellow Jackets. Uh, Massachusetts Lampier taking third was a bit of a surprise for me with seventy-two points. I mean, South Lake obviously performing, taking fourth with fifty-four points. Um, you know, but credit where credit's due. I mean, Burma Detroit Country Day's balance ended up showing the difference there, and the guys. And the girls, Detroit Country Day, dominant again behind their balance um, with 147 points. Um, St. Clair Shore South Lake was second with 82 points. Birmingham Marion was third with 77 points. Warren Regina and Ferndale tied for fourth with 68 points each. Ferndale University was sixth place um, with um, 33 points. So... Kind of really surprised with Ferndale here. I mean, like, you know, I kind of I kind of thought, you know, Ferndale would score more in this meet. But, you know, it comes down to balance. And, you know, you look at Birmingham Detroit Country Day. I mean, you know, as I thought about coming into that meet, I, I said that balance would be the key. And it and it showed its head. I mean, the balance was the difference there um, in that meet. And it, and it showed. So... You know, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Birmingham Detroit Country Day, um, their women's team had a nice showing. Um, I mean, I was really impressed with St. Clair Shore South Lake. I mean, they had a really nice performance. I'm holding off Birmingham Marion, who I, I kind of thought, you know, maybe would not perform as well as thought. But, you know, and then Warren Regina and Ferndale tying with 68 points. I mean, like, so... Really, you know, Ferndale sprints and relays, you know, I knew how good they would be coming in, but, you know, I just didn't expect, um, you know, Birmingham and Detroit Country Day showing that dominance, um, 147 points. I mean, knocking the field off by 65 points against the, um, a good um, Cavaliers team. I mean, like, really, um, that says a lot and give credit where credit's due. I mean, like, um, they performed really well, so... We'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, finish up in that region. Um, so, but credit where credit's due. I mean, I kind of thought it would have been between Birmingham and Detroit Country Day and Ferndale. Uh, didn't expect South Lake, um, Madison Heights. Um, you know, I mean, like Birmingham and Marion. And then, um, you know, just didn't expect, um, you know, that result. So, you know, just kind of really surprised how that one went. Um, credit where credit's due. Um, Porn St. Clair Shore, South Lake, Warren, Regina. Um, so credit where credit's due there. Um, Region 10 at Romeo. Um, this was very interesting. Um, I was really impressed with the couple teams. Um, particularly, um, you gotta get credit where credit's due. Um, and I think, you know, and that's the credit where credit's due. Um, this was an interesting regional. I mean, Troy Athens and the guys ended up winning the regional. Um, 82 points, holding off Chippewa Valley with um, 80 points, who was finished second. New Baltimore Inc. was third with 70 behind their distance. Romeo was fourth with 69.5, and then Macomb, Dakota was um, fifth, holding off Utica Eisenhower, 66 and a half, and Utica Eisenhower was sixth with 66. Um, so when I look at this meet here, and I kind of expect, you know, you look at what Troy Athens, their strength this year has been the mid-distance. And I think really that's what it comes down to is the, is the mid-distance ended up being the, you know, being the difference here. And Troy Athens, they found a way to, 
they found a way to be, um, you know what I mean? They found a way and knocked off a really good Chippewa Valley team whose strength always has been the sprints. So you kind of think to yourself and say, okay, um, you know, you know Chip, you knew coming in Chippewa Valley was going to score. So kind of had to figure out where Troy Atkins was going to get the bulk of their other points. And it looks like they found a way to spread things out and they end up getting this regional. Um, you know, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay, we knew how good they were in the distance. Um, so that was really interesting there. Um, Romeo was fourth with 69 and a half. And then Macomb, Dakota was fifth with 66 and a half. Um, so really, you know, you kind of showed, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of showed, I mean, like, um, it was a tight meet. I mean, you know, Yuka Eisenhower was six with 66. So really tight meet between those six teams um, in this in the boys' regional. I mean, it came down to Troy Atlas' strength was the mid-distance, obviously, and they knocked off a really good Chippewa Valley team whose strength was the sprints and the relays. Um, New Baltimore, Lincoln Bay, their distance was good. And then Romeo, um, Macomb, Dakota, Utica, Eisenhower, that was a really tight meet. And also with New Baltimore, Lincoln Bay as well. So, you know, so it could have been, it could have gone either way. I mean, but credit where credit's due. I mean, Troy Athens, they found a way to win that meet. And, you know, credit where credit's due over there. So, interesting meet there on the boys' side. Um, Troy Athens finding a way, the only representative in Oakland County um, in the OA who ended up winning the um, regional on the boys' side of things. Um, on the girls' side, Macomb, Dakota took first, 129, edging out Romeo, who had 101. Utica Ford, two, was third with 68 points. Troy Athens, fourth with 59 points. Utica was um, fifth with 58 and a half. So when I look at Macomb, Dakota, balance, it starts and ends with balance with them. Um, you kind of got to get credit where credit's due with them. Um, the, just the balance of that meet, you kind of really thought um, the Cougars, you know what I mean, you know, they got a lot of balance on that team. Romeo, second place, you know, on their home track at Barnable Field. Distance was the difference for them. Their distance has been very good all year long. So 101 is not a bad score for them. It's just, you know, been Dakota, Dakota difference between them and Romeo with the sprints. Um, so you kind of really would think, you know what I mean, with them, it's just the balance was the difference there. Troy Athens had a nice showing, taking fourth with 59 points. Um, had a shot at Utica Ford, too, but just couldn't get it. Um, Utica ended up finishing fifth with 58.5. Um, so, the Chieftains had a nice showing as well. So, But at the end of the day, Macomb, Dakota was the dominant team based on the um, on their distance. Um, you know, obviously. So, credit where credit's due there with them. So, kind of got to get credit to where credit's due with them. Um, region 9 at Milford, um, this was a stunner for me, and I think there was a couple of stunners here. I mean, like, a couple things I didn't expect. Um, Clarkston's boys ended up winning the, um, Clarkston's boys ended up winning the, um, the boys meet, um, holding off Wall Lake Central, 93-91. Um, Milford was third with 56 and a half. No by Detroit Catholic Central was, um, Fourth with 55. Lake Orion rounded out the top five with 54 points. Um, when I look at that meet and I kind of look at, okay, Wall Lake Central's strength has always been the throws. I mean, last season, Wall Lake Central relied a lot on the throws on the field events to um, carry them to their um, to the regional championship last year. Um, so it kind of really, you kind of thought, okay, if there was going to be a challenger who could really do some damage. I mean, like, you could have thought maybe, um, maybe Milford, um, maybe, um, maybe Lake, maybe a Lake Ori, maybe a Nova Detroit Cat Central, but Clarkston, you know, you look at the season the Wolves have had, I mean, the balance for them has really been the difference for them. And, you know, you really look at what Clarkston's done as, you know, they've really, you know, for them, it's kind of, they kept everybody you know, within track. And I think, you know, you kind of look at the talent level over there at Clarkston and you really say, okay, you're going to lose a lot of these, you know, the combination of, you know, in track and field, you got the combination of, um, of you got um Clarkston, junior high, then you got Sasha Ball, middle school, um, you know, and then for the sixth and seventh and the Clark junior high for the eighth. 
um, a lot of those kids, you know what I mean? They tend to like, they do different, they branch out into different sports. You look at baseball, you look at um, lacrosse, obviously, you know what lacrosse with them, they're a powerhouse there. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, and then, but at least credit to Clarkson Step for keeping them all together. Um, and this is the result you get. Um, holding off a really good Wall Lake Central team, pre predominantly the throwing power they are. Winning that by two points. Um, you know, so credit where credit's due for the Wolves. I mean, like, they ended up finding a way to win that regional. Um, and it was a hard-fought one for them. I mean, 93 points to 91. It was really tight. I mean, Milford was a distant third with 56 and a half. I mean, nobody Detroit Catholic Central was fourth with 55. Lake Orion was fifth with 54. Um... So you kind of really look at that performance and say, okay, I mean, like, you know, it's a big win for the Wolves. I mean, like, especially with the, um, with everything that they've been going through. Um, farming, I mean, other teams in the OA, North Farmington was seventh, tied for seventh with Wall Lake West with 47 points. Farmington was 10th with 34 points. Oxford was seventh with, um, actually, no, Oxford was, um, was 13, I mean, West Bloomfield was, um, was, um, 12th with 33 points, which was, I was a little surprised there. And then Oxford was 13th with 18 points there. So I was kind of really, I'll be honest with you, I was really surprised with West Bloomfield. Because um, you really look at West Bloomfield, the talent level they have there, they're really talented. They're a talented group. I mean, they got some athletes on that team, especially in the sprints. Um, just kind of surprised, you know, West Bloomfield would finish 12th with 33 points. I mean, just really surprised how that one went. Um, just really surprised how that one um gone there so you know just really really shocked that West Bloomfield really you know they had their moments where they um you know they um they look good I mean like they had a nice year but you know just surprised at the score I mean like West Bloomfield only scoring 33 points Oxford it was a down year for them I mean 18 points you know I mean like I know it was a down year for them and I know um Oxford I expect to be back next year um, North Farms is scoring 47 points tied Wall Lake Western. Um, pretty impressive showing for them. So, like I said, I mean, Clarkson winning the boys' side, it was really, really tight. So, we'll see what happens there with them. I'm going forward there. On the ladies' side, um, Lake Orion finding a way to win this one. I was really surprised here with this one. 96.7.3 quarters. Um, barely holding off Wall Lake Northern, who scored 90.5. Clarkson was third with 86 and, and three quarters. Fontos Mercy was fourth with 80 points. And West Bloomfield was, um, fit right out the top five with 69 points. Um, Farmson was sixth with them, 53 and a half. Oxford seventh with them, 41 points. North Farmington ninth with 41 points. Oh, with 30, I mean, North was ninth with 34 points. Um, rounding out the OAA in that regional. So, you know, when I look at Lake Orion and, you know, people say to me, you know, you look at, of course, the girls team last year at Scripps Middle School. Um, they took second place at the Oakland County meet last year. This is a very, that's a very young team that Coach Andrew McDonald has. Um, and then you look at Oakview Middle School. You know, I mean, you need to look at what, um, what Oakview's done. I mean, they got proven runners themselves. And you, I mean, under um, Coach Meadows, and then you look at under Coach John Blacksuck at Walden Middle School, they've done a really nice job over there. So when you look at when you look at Lake Orion, having three middle schools is really important, you know, because one that provides that feeder system, you know, to the Dragons. Now, albeit you, you know, you're gonna have players that are gonna, you know, they're gonna. You know, they're going to have athletes that are going to do other sports like lacrosse. You're going to do, like, um, soccer. Um, you're going to also have, like, um, you know, and then also with field hockey coming up. And we don't know what's going to happen there. But Coach McDonald's done a really nice job with this program. He's done a really nice job with this program. And, you know, the difference in the 4x4 four four for Lake Orion taking second place there behind Wild Lake Northern, um, they did just enough. They did just enough. Um, Clarkson had a nice showing them. They're a very young team. So I, I mean, Clarkson's a team that really, they're getting better real quick. West Bloomfield taking fit behind their sprints. 
Um, obviously with Tatum, um, I'm really high on this Laker team going forward. And this is a really young Laker team. I mean, like, West Bluefield's a team that really, you know, they're going to be solid for years to come. Farmington had a nice showing, sixth place, 53 and a half. Oxford, you know, scoring 40, 41 points behind the play of, um, you know, led, of course, by, um, they got not, some nice balance. Also, Tegan O'Connor in the throws. Um, North Farmington taking ninth with 34 points. Um, so, a team I was kind of really surprised with here was Wall Lake Central. Because I, I thought Wild Lake Central would do better in this meet. Only took 8th place. Um, Western only scoring 21 points. Kind of a little surprise there. So, it'll be interesting to see how... Um, but credit where credit's due. I mean, like, you know, with... Um, you know, credit where credit's due. I mean, Lake Orion ended up finding a way to win that meet over at, um, over at Milford. Um, it is a big, big win for them. Um, so... You know, at the end of the day, you know, it was Lake Orion's, you know, Lake Orion's um, relays were huge. Um, the um, Lake Orion's a team, next three years, look out. I mean, Coach McDonald's building something with the girls. I mean, taking over for a legendary icon and Coach Dan Ford. Um, you know, that says a lot to where, um, that, that says a lot to where, um, the Dragons have been, and I think Coach McDonald's done a really nice job building that program. But also, but I also got to get credit to the middle schools of, um, you know, of um, at Scripps, Walden, and Oakview. I know Coach McDonald, Coach Meadows, and Coach Blackstock have done a magnificent job building, you know, with the middle school programs, building them up, and you know, and obviously, you know, you look at the result, and you look at, of course, that regional championship for Lake Orion. Um, on the girls' side, that's really where um, the results have been. So, very interesting to see what happens going forward um, for the Dragons, and I think they're going to be a scary team to watch in, in years to come. Uh, let's go to the re Region 8 over at Rochester here. We got, um, you know, when you look at um, this one here, um, on the ladies' side, Oak Park won this one, scoring 130 points behind their balance, um, behind their depth in the sprints and the hurdles and the relays. Um, holding off Detroit Renaissance, 124, same thing. Rochester was third with, behind their distance with 99 points. Royal Oak was fourth with 46 points. And um, Adams was fifth with 43 points. Stony Creek was sixth with 35.5. Troy was seventh with 34 points. Groves was eighth with 33.5. Blue Hills, ninth, 28 points. Seaholm, tenth with 21 points. And Tian Berkeley had 14 points each, running out the scoring. So when I look at the dominance of Oak Park, obviously the sprints, the distance, actually the sprints, relays, they, um, that they have enough distance, you know what I mean, to find a way to win this one. So they've really found a way to win based on their distance. Um, the sprints we know has been very good. They're, um, you know, they, they really haven't had a lot of field events, you know what I mean? So with Oak Park, um, but they just relied a lot on their balance scoring, um, first and seconds, a lot of those, um, on that Saturday afternoon. Um, Rochester, with their distance, um, kept them in it early. I mean, they were, they were dominating early. And then and then Oak Park and um, Detroit Renaissance behind their sprints um, and their hurdles really dominated in the sprints. And that ended up being the big difference over there. Um, Royal Oak um, just stayed close with their distance. Obviously, Adams, you know, so. But obviously, Oak Park, you know what I mean, with the way that they're built, um, you know, obviously, with with their talented um their talented program under Coach Giles, um, Detroit Renaissance, of course, they're a proven track power themselves, taking second place. Um, you know, so it ended up being as I thought it would be, but I kind of was a little surprised. Rochester Sprints um, had a rough time with Oak Park. Um, kind of surprising the four hundred though with um in one of the events. Um, I think they had a 10 qualifiers in there, which was just absolutely insane. So just really insane how that one goes. I mean, like, you know, but from a team perspective, Oak Park, um, knocking off Detroit Renaissance really wasn't surprising. Um, so, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how Oak Park does in the Oakland County meet. So we'll see what happens going forward with them there. Um, on the boys' side, um, Adams holding off Troy. 93-92. I mean, that was nuts. Um, 
Groves finished third with 67. Oak Park was fourth with 63. Um, Royal Oak was fifth with um, 62 points. Rochester was sixth with 49 points. Stony Creek ninth with 26. Booby Hills tenth with 24 points. Abbondale was 11th with 21 points. a and at 20 points. Berkeley at 18 points. And Seaholm was tied for 14th with 8 points. So, Adams, they won the league meet two weeks ago. You knew they had balance. I was really impressed with Troy here. Because Troy really, really impressed me here. I mean, Troy, there's a reason why they won the white this year. So I was really impressed with the Colts that they hung tough with Adams. Groves, obviously, with the field events, um, the throws, obviously. Um, I think they got one who's qualified going in there. I think it's Avery Gott, uh, who just recently just committed to Michigan for football. Um, so, you know, and then they had another one, and a young man who also threw 49. Um, I think it's Omar Harrison, I think. Um, I got to figure, I got to look at the results here. Um, so when I look at Oak Park, uh, when I look at, when I look at Roger, when I look at him, Groves, yeah, it was Amari Harrison at Groves, who 49 feet five. Um, you know, then, um, you know, but Avery Gock, I mean, I haven't seen him most of the year. He threw 52 feet. Um, you know, and he's back next year. Um, then you look at a guy like Spencer Beekman. Um, who's going to be, um, who's also going to county throwing 50 feet too. I'm really excited for Spencer Beaton because I think he's going to be a very, very dangerous player next year for Stoney. Also play, he's a multi-sport athlete, plays football, plays basketball for coach. Um, I mean like, um, plays basketball and then coach and then also does, um, and then also throws. So that says a lot. You know, I mean, I expect Beekman to have a big year. Um, over at Stony Creek, and I think Stony Creek, you know, you really look at with them. Um, I think it's, I think Stony's gonna be fine. I really think that, um, you know, the performance they had, um, I, I think the Cougars, you know, they had a great performance. Um, but Adams, you know, with that balance, I mean, it, it shows the difference there was the balance, and I think, you know, that's really what's gonna be, um, with them, and I think. That was the difference was Adams' balance um, holding off a really good Troy team. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. But we'll see what happens people in the Oakland County meet. Um, obviously, Oak Park's the favorite um, in, in the girls' side, but I think Lake Orion could have a say. Maybe Roche Rochester and Clarkson will as well. Um, on the boys' side, you know, you got you – got, um, the boys, I think, is wide open. I really think the boys is wide open. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see. I mean, like, I don't... I think Adams is a shot. Um, Wall Lake Central's got a shot. Um, but it could be, it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, and I think it, it'll be really interesting to see how um, that meet will go. And I think, you know, and I think that'll be... I think that's at Clarkson this year, so I gotta look at that's at Clarkson. But it'll be very interesting to see how the Oakland County meet goes. But I, if I had to pick right now with teams, um, I wide open there. I think Adams. I still would take Troy. Um, you know, obviously, but then you know on the girls' side, you know Oak Park. We know how loaded they are. Um, so, but I think Lake Orion could have a strong say. Also, Rochester, Clarkston, um, Wall Lake Northern could have a say as well. So we'll see what happens there going forward. Um, but that could be a really interesting meet um, on Friday. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. All right, we're going to preview girls soccer here. The um, We're going to preview, of course, girls soccer here. Uh, we're going to actually also preview also lacrosse as well because lacrosse is starting up as well. Um, as I mentioned here with boys lacrosse, um, Region 3 at Heartland. Heartland's going to be the favorite there. I, th I think Heartland, you know, should have no issue here in this dish in this region. Um, I think Heartland's home field. Heartland's going to win this one pretty convincingly. Region 4 at Troy. Um, you know, I still am going to go Clarkston. I mean, Clarkston, you know, they're a solid team. I mean, they've been really good. I mean, they're young this year, but I can't judge Clarkston. 
um, in lacrosse. I really think the Wolves will have a chance here. I think I think they're going to make a run here. Um, Macomb, Dakota, uh, Lake Orion, Region 5 at Lake Orion. Got Macomb, Dakota, they got at Lake Orion. Um, I don't see how Macomb, Dakota's get by the Dragons. Um, Lake Orion, home field, state ranked. Um, I don't really see anybody here in this region getting by Lake Orion in this one. Region 6, I just don't see anybody touching Burr of the, Burr Burr of the Rice. Um, you know, over at Birmingham C home. Region 7, same thing. No one's touching nobody by Detroit Catholic Central. Um, four, region 14, Detroit Country Day. Uh, I really don't see anybody touching Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, Adams could have a say, but end of the day, I just don't think Country Day um, is going to get touched in that regional on the boys' side. Um, on the girls' side, um, on the girls' side, Region 3 at Bloopy Hills, um, I think this is going to be interesting with Troy. Um, I think Troy's wild card there. Um, Blue Bay Hills and Birmingham United look like they're the two top teams. Um, but I, I just think that, um, so we'll see what happens there, but I'm going to give the edge to, um, to Birmingham. To Blue Bay Hills, my bad, I'm going to give the edge there. Um, Region 4, Grand Blank, you know, Heartland's going to be the team that's favored there. Um, Lake Warren could have a say in this one. I mean, like, so, but I think, I think, you know, but I think at the end of the day, Heartland's going to win this region. Um, region 6 at Farmington. Um, Dearborn, Devon, Child, Wixom, St. Catholic, Senior Academy, and Amber, Father, Gabriel, Rashard. I think one of these three, three teams are going to win that region. Um, region 7 at Notre Dame Prep. Um, no one's touching Kingswood, Liggett, Regina, Birmingham, Marion, Detroit Country Day, Notre Dame Prep. Stony Creek's got a shot at this thing, but at the end of the day, I just don't know if I could see Stony Creek um, touching one of those few teams, but they do got a shot. So we'll see what happens there in that region over there on the girls' side of things. Um, girls' soccer. Um, of course, District 5 at Davison. Um, as I said, um, you know, I mean, it's a wide open district over there. I'm going to take Lake Orion in this one. Over, um, I, I just, I just think Lake Orion, they, I mean, revenge tour. You got to think revenge tour them. I mean, they, they lost to Davison, lost to Clarkson, lost to Oxford earlier in the year. Um, got back at Clarkson at Petoskey. Um, but, you know, Clarkson, you know, they're one of the top teams in the state. They won the white this year. Um, obviously with Davison, um, having a win against Troy Athens, that was huge for them. Um. But I know, um, I know reading the Oakland Press, I mean, they picked Clarkson. I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to take Lake Orion. Um, so I, I got the Dragons winning that district over at Davison. Um, I think Lake Orion's motivation and revenge tour. They do open up with Lapeer, though. That's a really difficult, ma tricky matchup with Lapeer. But I think the Dragons will find a way and win that one. I just think they're, in, they're motivated right now the way that that team's been playing right now. District 8 at, Wa at Water Vermont. Um, you got Farmington, West Bluefield, North Farmington, A&T. That winner, Farmington, A&T, taking on Bloomfield Hills. And then the winner of North Farmington, A&T, taking on Water Vermont. Like I said, I don't see anybody touching Bloomfield Hills in this district. Um, and I think, you know, the reason why is I think the Blackhawks are a team that really um, battle-tested. Um, I think they're battle-tested, and I think, you know, you really look at it here. I think, you know, North Farmington's got a shot, but... I just think at the end of the day here, I just don't see anybody touching the Blackhawks um, in that district. So I really think the Blackhawks are, are going to be the team to beat in that district. District 14 at Seaholm. Um, this one's going to be interesting. You got Royal Oak, Ferndale, Troy Athens, Seaholm, Groves Berkeley, and the winner of Royal Oak and Ferndale taking on Troy. Troy ended up winning the red this year, um, but they tied Athens. Um, when I look at Troy, experience, they got a ton of experience. They got a lot of experience. I mean, you really look at that team, and they're well-balanced and well-coached. Um, but when you look at Troy and Troy Athens, I mean, both teams have been state, state ranked all year. Um, Troy Athens has been struggling a little bit, which is a bit concerning when you look at the Red Hawks. Um, if that, if they don't get it together, I think they're done. Um... I think this is going to be Troy, Troy Athens part two in the, um, in the district semifinals, on uh, the district final. Um, I know the Oakland press is picking Troy to win it, 
but I'm going to disagree here because I really think when I look at, you know, to be the champ, you got to beat the champ. And right now, when you look at the champ right now in that district, it's Troy Atkins. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. But I just think when I look at the district right now, and it in this one here, you know, Berkeley and Groves can be our upset traps waiting to happen. Um, Berkeley, we know, is a dangerous team. We know that they are very, they're, they're my sleeper. They're my wild card. Um, and I think with Berkeley, it's it, their experience. I mean, they're, they're an experienced team. They're an experienced group. And I think they could give problems to a team like Troy Athens, you know, which I think they could really do some damage. And I think they could really, they could make some significant noise. They can really do. And I think, you know, that's going to come down to it's Ken. You know, and, and, and Troy and Troy Anthony, let's not forget, they played a 1-1 draw. So, I think it'll be interesting. But, I know the Oakland Press is going Troy. I'm going to go Troy Athens in this one. To be the champ, you got to beat the champ. And Troy Athens right now, to me, is the champ. Um, So, we'll see what happens there. But I got the um, I got the Red Hawks moving on the next round. So, we'll see what happens there. District 15 at Rochester. This is the kiss of death. District got Utica 4-2 taking on Utica. Um, Eisenhower taking on Romeo. The winner of Ford, Utica, takes on Adams. And then Stony Creek and Rochester, a district final rematch, which this one's interesting. Really interesting. Because Stony Creek and Rochester played in the district final last year. Rochester was the number one team in the state. And they lost to Stony Creek. And it was a stunner how they lost to Stony Creek. So when I look at this district, and I'm looking at the other teams here, Adams has been decent all year long. Um, Utica, I mean, like Utica Eisenhower has been very good all year long. Romeo's been solid. I mean, Utica Ford 2 and Utica Ford. Have been in Utica, Utica Ford 2 and Utica have been really good all year long. I think this is Adams' best chance to get to the district final, considering, you know, Stony Creek and Rochester play each other. And then that team would have to see Utica Eisenhower most likely in the district semifinal. Um, and then on the other side, that winner, Utica Ford, Utica takes on Adams. So when I look at this matchup here, Stony Creek and Rochester, that one's going to have some tense drama in there. Because I thought Rochester, in my opinion, has really underperformed this year. I really think that, that they've really underperformed this year. Stony Creek has been up and down. Yes, they're the defending Division I state champs. But Stony Creek this year has been really, really hard to figure out. Really hard. And Utica Eisenhower, I think they got one regular season loss. So, that me- district, that side of the district's absolutely brutal. 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 So, and my prep zone's going, Oakland Press is going Stony Creek to win this district. I got to apologize to everybody in the OA, because I'm going to Utica Eisenhower in this district. I just think that the Eagles, um, they're going to get one of them. They're going to get Stony Creek or Rochester. Um... And I don't know if neither team matches up really well with um neither team matches up really well with um with um Utica Eisenhower. It'll be interesting to see. I mean it'll be a tight game. Um and I think it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. And then on the other side of things, you got Adams, who Adams I think's got the best draw here. I think Adams can get by Utica. Or Utica Ford. I think can get by one of them and get the district final. But I just think Utica Eisenhower's got a lot of firepower, a lot of experience. Um, I got the Eagles moving on here. Um, it'd be a very competitive district. This is why the district's called the Kiss of Death. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. But 
I just think Utica Eisenhower right now, the way that they're playing, they're a scary group. District 31 at Avondale. This is Division 2. You got Birmingham, Marion, Detroit Renaissance, Warren Fitzgerald versus Auburn Hills, Avondale, Farms Hills, Mercy versus Oak Park, and Cranma King was Mass Heights Lampier. Um, Mercy's a young team. They could make a run in this. They knocked off um, Birmingham. Um, they knocked off, um, you know, they knocked off Cranbrook Kingswood. Um, Mass Knights Lampier could be a, a team that has to stay too in this. But I just don't think anybody's touching Birmingham Marion in this district. I just think that the difference is going to be is can the Mustangs, um, you know, Birmingham Marion, two experience, have been a defending division, defending division two state champs. Um, so I think the Mustangs really, they're going to make some noise here. And I think Birmingham Marion, um, they're going to be a team that's scary. And I think they're going to make some noise here. I really like the Mustangs. Um, they're going to knock them off. And I think, you know, I, I think Birmingham Marion wins this district, I think, pretty, pretty convincingly here. So that's my take. And, and, and my prep zone's also going with that too. So Birmingham Marion, both of us agree. I mean, we think they're going to take that district over in Auburn Hills. So we'll see what happens there. All right, let's go to, let's go to some baseball and softball. I mean, first we're going to softball here. Um, the matchups haven't been announced yet over in District 56. Um, but the teams in there, you got Harper Woods, Detroit Denby Tech, Detroit Lincoln King Academy, Detroit East English, Detroit Southeastern, and Harper Woods Chandler Park. Um, I don't see anybody touching Harper Woods in this district, regardless whoever's hosting this. Um, I just think the Pioneers, um, they're going to find a way. I just think the schedule they played, um, that'll say some things there, and I think it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes in that one. Um, now to Division One, District 4, over at Lapeer. You got Lapeer taking on Holly, Oxford taking on Davison. Oxford and Davison is going to be interesting. I mean, that's going to be really interesting in the semifinal. Um, I think when you look at that matchup, um, you know, Davison's been solid all year, but Oxford, you know, they got experience. Um, you know, Oxford, of course, won the district last year. Um, Holly, we know they got a, I know they got a very good senior on that team. Um, I think she had her 1,000th career hit a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't have the name with me there, but when I look at this district here, it's hard for me not to go against Oxford. Um, I just think Oxford, the schedule they played, they're in the red, one of the toughest leagues in the state. Um, I think they're going to get by. Um, I think Holly gets by Lapeer here, and um, I think Holly plays Oxford, and I think Oxford moves on past Holly um, in this district. I mean, like, I, I just think that, um, you know, I really like Oxford's experience to be the difference there against Holly, so... We'll see what happens there in that one. But I got Oxford knocking off Holly. Um, District 22 at Le Farm Tales Mercy. You got Livonia Stevens taking on Farmington. Um, and a t taking on Farm Tales Mercy. This is setting up to be a district final between Livonia Stevenson and Farm Tales Mercy. Um, you know, when I look at this matchup here, Stevenson's got experience. Farm Tales Mercy's got best pitcher in the state, one of the best pitchers in the state. I also think home field is going to be a factor here. So I'm going to take the Marlins in this one here. Home field experience, one of the best pitchers in the state. Um, so give me the Marlins in this one um, pretty easily here. District 23 at Warren Mott. Um, Warren Mott, I mean, taking on Ferndale, Oak Park, Detroit Renaissance. Not a very strong district. I have read the um, CNG um, newspaper article on Warren Mott. Um, which is a really interesting read. I mean, they're a very, very young team. They don't have a, I don't think they have a senior on the roster. Um, Ferndale, we know, we know how dangerous they can be. Um, I think the Eagles can make some noise here, but, but I think that could go either way between the Eagles and the Marauders. Um, that could go either way. Oak Park, Detroit Renaissance. I expect the Phoenix to get to the district final, pass the Knights. Um, and I think Detroit Renaissance wins this district um, with ease. But somebody could upset them, either Ferndale, Warren, Mott. They got a chance to upset them. It wouldn't surprise me if neither of those teams do upset them. So 
But at the end of the day, I'm gonna take the um take the um Phoenix to move on here, win that district um pretty convincingly. So we'll see how that one goes. So see how that one goes. District 26 at Waterford Kettering at Waterford Mont versus Waterford Kettering. That one was taking on Bloomfield Hills and West Bloomfield in an interesting matchup against Clarkston. Um, Bloomfield Hills is a dangerous team. They're not a bad team. I mean, like, they're a very dangerous team. I expect Bloomfield Hills to get the district final. And I think they're going to get there. Clarkston and West Bloomfield is very interesting. Because... Clarks, West Bloomfield has been up and down this year. They've been up and down. Clarkston has not been the same team since the pandemic. And, you know, Clarkston's, they haven't been themselves. They haven't been. So when I look at the Wolves, there's some question marks with Clarkston. Real question marks with Clarkston. So when I look at this matchup, I really think, you know, this is going to come down to Bloomfield Hills against Clarkson. Bloopy Hills can hit. They can pitch. Um, I know they're very, they're a very good program. But this is Clarkson. This is Clarkson. I mean, proven powerhouse. You know, proven juggernaut program. So when I look at this matchup here, I gotta go with the Wolves. I gotta go with Clarkson. I mean, if Bloopy Hills wins this district, I'd be shocked. I'd be really surprised they win this district. But I got to go with the Black. I got to go with the Wolves. I got to go with Seatown. I got to go with Clarkston. See how this one goes. District 27 over at Seahome. Got North Farmington taking on Groves. Um, Seahome taking on Berkeley. Um, Seahome's a young team. Um, they played in the red. They got home field. So they can play a night game over there. They can play a night game. Groves has been up and down. So has North Farmington. If there's one team I can trust in this district, it's Berkeley. I can trust Berkeley in this district. I mean, North Farmington, they've been up and down. Competitive. Um, It'll be interesting with Groves in the first game. Really interesting to see how that one goes. Seahome and Berkeley should be interesting. They, that one should be really interesting. So, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be competitive. I like Berkeley in this district. I really do. I think the Bears are going to get it done. I really do. Let's see how that one goes. District 28 at Avondale. You got Troy versus Troy Athens. Avondale versus Royal Oak. Um, interesting matchup between Coach Laura Guzman's team going against the Red Hawks. Then you have the Yellow Jackets and the Ravens. I think the Ravens knock off the Yellow Jackets. Um, and then I think this is going to be interesting. I think Troy, Troy Athens is going to be really interesting. I think Troy finds a way to win this one. I think Troy's going to get the district final take on Royal Oak. And I got to apologize to Coach Laura Guzman here. Um, and I know Troy and Royal Oak are going to be in the same division for girls basketball next year. Um, I just think the Ravens are going to win this one. I mean, they won a district title last season. Um, knocking off Berkeley. They have the same magic, it looks like. Um, it's a tougher district this time around. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to come down to his, um, I just think the Ravens getting there, the, getting that experience, winning the district last year, it's going to motivate them. Um, I, I just think at the end of the day, here, I'm going to go with the Ravens to win this, um, to win that district over in Auburn Hills. And then last but not least, District 29 for softball, we got at Stony Creek, you got Lake Orion, Rochester, Stony Creek, Adams. Um, you know, I mean, like, Franz of Ojic going against um going against Aaron Flynn. Then you have Rochester taking on Lake Orion. Lake Orion's hitting's really good. They're hitting. They got pitching. They were Final Four team last year. Um, Stony Creek has one of the has a has one has probably one of the best pitchers in the state. Aaron Flynn to go to Detroit Mercy next year. Um, Aaron Flynn against the Dragons looked like it's going to be inevitable in the district final. Now, they're depending if there's any upsets here. Now, let's not forget, Adams could pull off an upset here against Stoney. They could. I mean, they really well could. I mean, considering Adams and, Adams and Stoney, I think it's, it's that second game. So, imagine having to pitch Flynn in the first game against, um, against Adams. Now, I don't know what Stoney Kirk would do if they... 
if 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 Adams gets the lead on Stony Creek, you know they're gonna counter, and you know they're gonna go to Flint. They're gonna go to Flint, obviously. Because they might, they're gonna try to save Flint for the Lake Oregon game. I really think they're going to. I mean, Lake Oregon, we know's got headers. They got heavy hitters. I think whoever wins this game is going to have a serious run to the um, deep, have a deep state playoff run. I think they're going to have a deep run. We'll see how that one goes. We're going to see how that one really, really goes. But we'll see. Then the baseball. Um, district 15 at Novi. This is probably one of the toughest districts in the state for baseball. Novi taking on Lavonia Stevenson. That winner taking on Farmington and Novi Detroit Catholic Central versus Novi. This could go either way. This could go either way. I mean, Northville's got a shot. CC's got a shot. Farmington's been proven power. Lavonia Stevenson's tough. This is going to be fun. Nobody's defending, nobody's defending Division One state champs here. Um, give me the Wildcats in this one. Home field. Matters, um, but it wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise anyone if they win that game. It wouldn't surprise anyone. It wouldn't surprise anyone if if any of these teams win that district. It really wouldn't surprise me. But I'm gonna take the Wildcats in this one. District 21 at UD Jesuit. A and T taking on Renaissance. UD Jesuit taking on Ferndale. I've seen the Cubs play. I don't see anybody touching the Cubs in this district. Um, I I just don't see anybody touching the Cubs in this district. Um, to district to division two, district fifty six at Growth Point University Liggett. Um, I'm going to take the um, you know, you got Growth Point University Liggett taking on St. Court Shore Salt Lake. Lake that winner is taking on Harper Woods Chandler Park. And then Detroit East English Village Prep takes on Harper Woods. Um, I think Harper Woods gets the district final, but I don't see him getting by Liggett. So I'm gonna take Growth Point University Liggett here to move on here in this um and they have home field as well, so you know, so credit where credit's due there. I think Harper Woods gets the final, but I just don't think they're going to get by. Um, they're, I don't think you're going to get by. Um, you know, Harper Woods isn't going to get by Growth Point University to get. Um, District 22 at Seahome. You got Berkeley versus Troy. That winner takes on Groves and Royal Oak versus Seahome. This is going to be competitive. Really competitive. Um, Groves did knock off Seahome earlier in the year. Berkeley. They're a scary team. Troy, I just don't trust Troy right now. I can't trust them. Um, Royal Oak and Seahome, of course. Um, Royal Oak, they're solid. Um, at the end of the day here, I got to go with the home team. I got to go Seahome. Home field matters. Experience matters when you have the Kinney brothers. Um, you got, um, they got experience on that team. I got the Maples winning this one for a lot of reasons. It's going to be competitive. It'll be tight. But I think at the end of the day, I'm going to take the Maples here to win that, um, to win this district. So we'll see what happens there. District 23 at Boompia Hills. North Farm taking on West Bloomfield. Birmingham Brother Rice taking on Boompia Hills. This looks like it's going to come down to West Bloomfield versus Birmingham Brother Rice. But North Farm is here to put an upset. So can Boompia Hills. Um... Pitching here is, I think pitching's the difference here. Birmingham Brother Rice is the number one team in the state um, for a reason. They're very good. Um, but I think at the end of the day here, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take the um, Lakers here because of that pitching staff. I mean, their pitching staff is really deep. So I, it'll be a competitive district. I think it'll be really tight. I've seen Brother Rice. I mean, they won the Catholic League crown this year. Um, very good team they have over there in Birmingham. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to take the, um, Lakers here. I think the Lakers are going to have just enough to, um, pull off a shocker here at Bloomby Hills and move on. Um, District 24 at Waterford Kettering. You got Avondale versus Kettering, Mott versus Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, I don't really see this district being competitive at all. And I think Orchard Lake St. Mary's on a revenge tour, considering what happened to them last year when they were upset by Lake Orion. Um, they got a new coaching staff over there. Um, I think Avenel gets by Kettering, but I don't think they're getting by St. Mary's. And, you know, I got to give the edge of Eaglets experience, proven talent, um, just everything right there that they have. Um, you just got to give everything what they have right now. So, 
Edge has to go to the Eaglets um, in that district. So I've got Orchard Lake St. Mary's moving on there in that district. District 27 at Utica Ford 2. You got Utica Ford 2 taking on Troy Athens. That winner takes on Sterling Heights Stevenson. And the other side, you got Sterling Heights and Utica. I really like Utica here in this district. Troy Athens are a decent team. I mean, they're solid. I mean, they've been solid all year. Utica's been consistent. Utica Ford 2 has been solid as well. They also got home field. I think it's because of the draw here. I think Utica knocks off Sterling Heights. Um... Has to face has to face one of those three teams, and I think the I think the how the draw is shaped up. I really think that's gonna be the difference there. I'm gonna take the Chieftains to win that district over. Um, you know, I would say I think Troy Athens is a shot to get to the final. I think they can knock off Stevenson. Um, but I think at the end of the day here, I think that um Utica will move on in that district. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Uh, district 31 at at Grand Blank, Fenton takes on Clarkson. That winner takes on Oxford. Grand Blank takes on Holly. Grand Blank state ranked. Um, Clarkson, I can't trust Clarkson in this tournament. Not one bit, especially because they had a hot start early. It's kind of struggling as of late. Oxford been up and down. Um, Grand Blank, we know state ranked. Holly and Fenton have been solid as well. Um, Grand Blank has home field. I mean, they got home field. Um... Grand Blank could be in line for a deep run. They they could be in line for a deep run. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I think Grand Blank's got a lot of talent. They got a lot of the proven experience. So I'm gonna take the Bobcats in that district. Um, I think don't be surprised if Fenton upsets Clarkson. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if Fenton upsets Clarkson. And then I think Oxford can knock off Fenton. I think Oxford gets the district final. Takes on Grand Blank. And I think Grand Lake rolls past Oxford and moves on to the um, next round. I'd be shocked if Grand Lake doesn't win that one. I'd be really, honestly, I'd be really shocked if they don't win that one. And then District 30 at Lake Orion. Stony Creek Adams, that one takes on Lake Orion. And Utica Eisenhower takes on Rochester. Um, Lake Orion, it's been a really odd team to figure out. I mean, they were cold early, got hot. Um... Been up and down here for them. It's been up and down. I mean, Rochester has proven they can go in the Lake Orion and win. They've won there twice. Um, Utica Eisenhower, um, they're a solid group. Adams has been good. So has Stony Creek. I mean, they've been both all. This district's basically a pick em district. Because of anybody can win this district over at Lake Orion. Lake Orion would be the favorite technically because of experience. They have home field. I mean, but there's been times where they just they just haven't looked the part, and you know that could be a pro, pro, pro to be, prone to be upset trap. You know what I mean? I think Lake Orange is a team that they're prone to be upset. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, but I think at the end of the day here, I gotta go with the Dragons because of experience. You know, experience matters. Now, yes, Rochester's been good, but they've been up and down as of late. It depends on who is playing the best baseball right now. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. I mean, anybody can be, can be anybody on any given day. So, in this district here, I'm going to take Lake Orion. Um, but it will not be an easy district. because. But then again, people say, well, nobody thought Lake Orion could go and knock off West Bloomington and Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the same day. I mean, that did happen last year. So, Lake Orion is a really dangerous team. But so is Rochester. So is Stony Creek. So is Adams. And so is the guys. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, before I sign on off here, um, I wish everybody best of luck in the postseason. Uh, I apologize if I didn't get to the previewing um, for other regionals like that, uh, for other regionals. So I apologize, uh, especially those doing golf. And of course, tennis, I just found out about, they just had their regionals already done. So we'll see what happens going forward. I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blogs at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest, latest information around the OAA. Um, keep an eye on the basketball situations for the um, boys at Troy Athens and Seaholm. And then the girls at Bloomfield Hills and Groves. 
Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, wish everybody a happy Memorial Day. Stay safe on the roads. And, um, and, um, you know, I wish everybody the best of luck, um, this, this week. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. And I, I will see you all on Tuesday. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Happy Memorial Day, OA Nation. God bless you.